Which you guys got another video here for you on the Minis Forum A1 X1 Pro. Now, Minis Forum sent this for review, so all opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released, and no money has changed hands for this review. So let's take a look in more detail of what this mini PC has to offer. This is everything you can get inside the box. If you purchase it, you're going to get your warranty or user manual right here. Now, I do believe that Minis Forum is probably making some of the best mini PCs on the market today. So you're going to get a thermal pad here and an extra heatsink for a drive if you want to put extra drives in. Again, we've got this little mounting system here. This is because this mini PC can be uh, stacked up vertically as well. It's also probably acting as a VESA mount there. We've got a little stand here, which means you can stand up your mini PC if you wish. And you've also got your power cable here and you've got your HDMI cable here as well and the mini PC itself. Let's take a look in closer detail of what the mini PC has to offer. So this is it right here, made in silver. Got the Minis Forum uh, logo on the front. We have a fingerprint sensor on here. Body is made of aluminium or aluminium if you're living in the States. So premium metal quality. On the front, we have some ports here. We have that AI port, and that's because this mini PC is a co-pilot empowered AI mini PC. Not a big fan of the actual AI button. I think they're just pointless, but that's my opinion. We also have a 3.5 millimeter combo jack and also a D mic. We have two of those on the front, and we also have USB 4 on the front as well with PD out of 15 watts and USB 3.2 Gen 2 type a ports on there we have two of those on the front of this machine so plenty of ports on the front there let's take a look at the sides on one of the sides we do have a sd card reader here so you can put your sd cards in there for quick access on the other side it's blank there's nothing on there and on the back this is where all the main ports are so let's take a closer look at what we have on the back so we have two uh, 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on there as well hdmi 2.1 and also dp 2.0 uh, port on there another usb 4 port which has also pd in 100 watts and pd out 15 watts on that port so oculink port on there as well which is also supporting pci express 4.0 times 4 usb 2.0 a kensington lock and also a clear cmos on there and you have your ventilation and your power input on there as well. I'll revisit this mini PC with that Oculink and do a test with some external GPUs because this is where that Oculink is going to come in real useful for people that want to use an external GPU and play games at really high uh, resolutions and high frame rates. So that is basically what we have on the back. Super duper powerful mini PC, if you ask me, probably some of the best mini PCs on the market, I think Minis Forum are making right now. On the bottom, you've got good ventilation as well. And there's one thing I will say about Minis Forum, and they're not paying me to say this, but they do have some of the best cooling for their mini PCs as well on the market from what I've tested. And I've tested a lot of mini PCs. So let's take a look inside the actual mini PC. We've got a couple of speakers here for dual speakers. And we also have two big large fans here. And this is something that Minis Forum do very well at keeping the mini PC nice and cool. Now we're going to need to remove some more screws here to gain access inside so we can take a look at the drive bays and also take a look at the RAM here. So we're going to go ahead and remove all of these screws. There's quite a few more screws on here. So it's not easy access. You will need to remove quite a few screws to gain access. And remember, the power unit is built inside the actual mini PC. So we have a built-in uh, 135 watts adapter here, so no external adapter needed. Here is your crucial memory. This is running at 5600. This is the 64 gig version, but you can upgrade this up to 96 gigabytes, which means you can give that GPU a bit more memory if you wanted to. The M.2 slots are 2280, and these also take three slots here we've got three slots on here and this can take up a maximum storage of 12 terabytes you've got your wi-fi 7 uh, card on there as well so you've got support of wi-fi 7 so you've got all the latest technology in this mini pc as well also the built-in power brick here 
which is something people always complain about in the comment section saying, oh, it's got an external power brick. Well, now they've got it built inside the actual mini PC. So I think they've pleased just about everyone here. So what we're going to do here is if you wanted to remove the motherboard, which I'm not going to do in this video, but you can remove the motherboard completely. Uh, but it's just basically what you see here is what you get. Now, this does have the Ryzen uh, AI9 HX370 processor in here, which has 12 cores and 24 threads, which is pretty impressive. You've got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth uh, 5.4. We also have on the here the memory, which can go right up to 96 gigabytes DDR5, 5600 speeds. I would like to see that speed a little bit faster, but again, remember this is sort of laptop memory speeds that we're getting here. M.2 slots are PCI Express 4.0, and there's three of those in there. Dual USB 4 ports on here, that Oculink port, which is really, really useful for external GPUs, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on there. You have two of those as well. Fingerprint sensor and co pilot button on the front, which I think is pointless. RDNA 3.5, 2900 megahertz, and that's also got the uh, 890M iGPU in there as well. Pretty decent specs for a mini PC. So when I'm running uh, this system here, I'm going to do some tests on here just to show you how good these mini PCs have become. So CPU-Z will basically give us all the specifications that you want to see, CPU, motherboard, memory, and all that sort of stuff. I've been through some of the memory specs already. So let's go ahead and what I'll do is I'll get to all of the specs through here. We'll run through here and just to show you what sort of specs are on this mini PC and then I'll run some benchmarks for you so you can see basically how it performs. This mini PC also has all branded components which is a really good uh, sign. We also have that 890M graphics on here which is going to give you plenty good uh, gra graphics for a mini PC. Running the stress test here you'll notice that there's hardly any sort of power draw or any sort of temperature issues like you see with a lot of other mini PCs. This is staying well within its range of cooling. There's no issues here, no thermal throttling whatsoever on this mini PC and it does it throughout all the tests that I run on this system. You can see there is also maximum temps here which is around about 66 at the moment and we also have uh, the power draw there which is around about 60 watts which is pretty impressive. If you look further down, you'll see there's no thermal throttling here. I've seen mini PCs like this doing thermal throttling all the time and it causes major issues. No issues with this mini PC whatsoever. Same thing with Cinebench. I run Cinebench R23. This is another test that also causes mini PCs a lot of issues where they end up having thermal throttling issues. No such issues with this mini PC as you can see here. No thermal throttling whatsoever, no temperature issues, no red coming up on the screen here like you see with a lot of other mini PCs which cause major problems for mini PCs running Cinebench. In this case, you're not getting that. So having a look at the CPU multi-core, we've got 22,368. I'm not going to run the single core test on here because I'm going to do some other benchmarks on here for you to see. So Time Spy got 3,537. So the Time Spy score was 3,537. And we also have the Night Raid score, which is 29,329, which is pretty good as well, as you would expect. So this is running also on two gigabytes of uh, memory for the actual GPU. I think I upgraded it and then run some more tests after the fact. So bear that in mind, some of these results are with the stock settings as well. Looking at Geekbench here, going to run the CPU uh, benchmark here so we can see what the CPU benchmark scores are for Geekbench. And you can see here we're getting no thermal throttling whatsoever or no temperature issues. Now, some of the mini PCs I've reviewed are flagging up some red on here and causing thermal throttling, not in this case for this mini PC, it's working absolutely flawlessly. We've got a single core score of 2,912 and a multi-core score of 15,247 for Geekbench, which is pretty impressive. We also 
did a GPU score, and that was 35,131. Remember that Geekbench score for the GPU, because I'm going to give it 8 gigabytes instead of 2 gigabytes, because that is only 2 gigabytes of memory, and I'll give it a bit more and we'll test it again a little bit later on once I upgrade it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other scores that we can do here. So what I'm going to do here is quickly show you Task Manager here, because I wanted to point out some bits inside here. So let's go inside here and have a look at the CPU. You can see all the specs for the CPU right here. And down the GPU area here, you will see that we've been running all these benchmarks with only two gigabytes of memory for the GPU. Now inside the BIOS, it does allow you to change a lot of this. And if you've got a lot of memory, you can give the GPU a bit more memory and that should help with performance. You've got the memory speed for the actual uh, RAM here. You can see 5600. And again, you might be able to get better performance further still if you had faster uh, memory it's just whether that motherboard would accept faster memory also let's go ahead and boot straight into the bios here and what we're going to do is quickly change the settings here you can see it's set to two uh, gigabytes of ram but you can change this right up to 48 gigabytes but as long as you've got enough to run the system i'm only going to just give it eight gigabytes here instead of two and that should be a plenty of a boost for what we're trying to do here and we can see what the results are and we've got a benchmark score of 37,003, which is just under 2,000 uh, points more. So we've bumped that up from 2 gigs uh, to 8 gigs, and we've got just under 2,000 points more on our uh, GPU benchmark scores on Geekbench. Now, the Kingston drive that is already in there, that's got Windows 11 on there, and you can see that is the drive that comes with this mini PC. There is the specs for... Uh, the uh, crystal disc mark and it is 4,600 reads and we have 3,907 writes for that particular drive that's in there. Remember you can put your own drives in with faster speeds in there as well. Let's go ahead and continue with some more benchmarks. Now I did mention about Copilot. This is all about Copilot. When you push that button on the computer it's going to open up Copilot here and this is exactly what this uh, mini PC is all about. They're promoting uh, the AI part of this particular mini PC. I'm not a big fan of uh, AI or uh, the co-pilot thing, but if you want to turn it off, you can do and ignore all of that. But again, it is on there as a feature. And again, you can just click on the icon on the uh, taskbar there rather than just pushing the button on the computer. I don't understand why they add them buttons on there. A bit pointless. And that's just my opinion. But let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do is quickly go into the system specs here and take a look at the about page here and you can see all of the specs that i have on here 64 gigabytes of ram and we also have windows 11 pro on here 24 h2 version of windows is already installed on this system so you could really use this as a plex media server as well if you wanted to or you could use it to play back your 4k videos it should be able to do multi-monitor display as well with those ports that you have on this mini pc you can see this is a 4K uh, stream that I'm doing here, playing this back. We've got no drop frames on here. Really, really decent uh, playback on here, as you'd expect with a PC of this sort of performance. So it should be able to handle all your 4K uh, playback, no problem whatsoever. And you can see playing back this 400 Mbps, 4K Ultra HD HEVC, and you can see this is a 10-bit file. It's playing this back. I'm using VLC because the built-in Windows app did not play this back. I'm not sure why, because it normally does. So can this mini PC game? Yes, it can. It can play AAA listed games at pretty decent frame rates as well. And you've also uh, can play retro games as well if you wanted to on one of these mini PCs. It can handle this no problem at all. It does have that Oculink port on there, which is going to allow you to put an external GPU onto this system if you really wanted to. I really wouldn't go down the route of buying a mini PC to just to use the Oculink. You might as well buy a PC, a small PC with a dedicated GPU inside because that way it's more cost effective. But the port is there, which I will make another video showing you Oculink technology and how it works and how you can use it. I have got an actual Minis Forum Oculink uh, deck, which I can put a GPU into and a power supply and show you basically what it works like and uh, what you're actually going to get if you ever bought one of these things. Now, again, like I said, you can play AAA listed games with the 
a built-in GPU that's on this system if you wanted to at pretty reasonable frame rates, depending on what games you're going to play. There's tons of games out there that can play at 1080p uh, with reasonable frame rates. And there's also games out there that you'd have to drop down the resolution down to, say, 720p or maybe 920p or something like that because it is an onboard GPU. And again, you can see here, We've got um, The Witcher loaded up here. I've not done any tweaks, and we're running this at uh, 1080p here. Uh, and again, it's working flawlessly, as you can see here. Yes, there's a little bit of micro stutter here and there, and that's due to the actual uh, game being quite intensive. And I've got the settings uh, up pretty high. But again, it works pretty well. You're having no issues playing these games whatsoever. Would I be playing buying this mini PC to play AAA listed games all the time? Probably not. But at the end of it, it can do it, and you can see it right here. Now, what is the pricing of these? Well, depends on which model you go for. The Minis Forum A1 X1 Pro comes in at £839, and that is for the 32 gigabyte model. If you go for the 64 gigabyte model, it's going to go up to 925 Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are about these mini PCs in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the very next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.